Hello everyone, I am Nitej and in today's tutorial, we will talk about one of the most crucial aspects of React development, which is, as you can see, error handling. We will explore how to effectively use error boundaries and custom hooks to make sure your React applications are more robust and user friendly. So React has always been known for its efficiency in building dynamic user interfaces but sometimes encounters errors that can break your application but with proper error handling these issues can be gracefully managed we will start by understanding what error boundaries are and how they can catch errors in the rendering phase then we will move on to the custom hooks which provide a powerful way to handle errors in asynchronous operations and event handlers so before I walk you through any code, first let's understand the types of errors which are there and then we will see what kinds of errors an error boundary is suitable for and for what kinds of errors a custom error catching hook is suitable for. There are the rendering errors which um, occur or which can be thrown in either the render method of the class components or they can be thrown when the functional components are rendering. They can also be thrown in the class component constructors within the error boundary. Next are the lifecycle method errors, which are, as the name suggests, are thrown in the class component lifecycle methods. So there are a bunch of different lifecycle methods like component did mount, component did update, etc. And if any error is thrown in those lifecycle components, then they will be called as lifecycle method errors. Next is the children components errors, which can be thrown in the child components. The child component can be either a class component or a functional component. So when any error is thrown in the child component, then they are called as child components error. Next one is the context provider errors. So the errors thrown within a context provider, which is a child of the error boundary, are called as context provider errors. So many of you might be thinking that you are hearing for these error classifications in React for the first time. Well, the reason I have done that is because I want to show you exactly the situations where an error boundary makes more sense and where a custom hook makes more sense to handle the errors. So next one is the asynchronous operations. Whenever errors are thrown in use effect or in any other side effect, then they are called as async operation error or the errors can be thrown from any of the other asynchronous code like, you know, async await functions or promises, etc. And then they are the event handler errors, which simply means errors raised within the event handlers for example, when a button is clicked or when a text input is changed. There can be errors occurring within custom hooks as well. So hooks can be composed of different hooks as well. So if there are errors which are occurring in those custom hooks, then they will be termed as custom hook errors. And then state management errors, which simply means um, when there is an incorrect state update in a functional component, then errors related to that can be categorized under state management errors. Then there are the server side rendering errors, which um, cannot be caught by any of the client side rendering process, but they can only be handled based on the error message, which is returned from the server or the um, you know status code, which is returned as the response of any API call. There could be external API or dependency failures, like for example, if we are using any third party library, the errors which are occurring in those third party libraries can be categorized under external API failures. There can be user generated errors, like, you know, generic errors, which are triggered by user actions. And they are like very much unexpected. Like, uh, for example, you cannot um, really predict what those errors can be. Now let's talk about error boundaries and custom error handling hooks and we will see where each one of them makes more sense. So as this description says, the error boundaries are designed to catch the errors um, in certain parts of a component tree. 
and they display a fallback UI instead of the um, crashed component tree with a with an error message. And these are the scenarios where they will be useful. So it simply means these are the errors which error boundaries will absolutely catch. And those are the rendering errors which I have already explained. Those are the lifecycle method errors, the errors which are thrown in child components and the context provider errors. Now there are some errors which error boundaries will not catch. The errors which are raised within event handlers which are thrown in asynchronous code. The errors which are thrown in the error boundary itself also will not be um, caught by the error boundary and the errors which are thrown in the error boundary children can only be caught within the error boundary and also the server side rendering errors will not be um, you know caught by the error boundary so this simply means when you are creating and using error boundaries then they are not a catch-all situation kind of thing you will still have to use custom error handling for your components now let's talk about the custom error handling hooks what kind of errors these hooks will catch first one is the async operations error which simply means as i have mentioned earlier any errors which are thrown in the side effects or performing data fetching subscription uh, etc in async functions and promises and in event handlers too we can use these hooks and i will show you in the code example how these hooks can be created and then integrated with components and when we need a specific error handling logic then also we can use the custom error handling hooks like for example if we want to log the errors to any external logging service or to you know show custom error messages via toast components then also we can uh, utilize the reusable custom error handling hooks they will also catch the errors in you know incorrect state updates in our component and they can also handle errors in custom hooks which can be used across the different components and the errors which the custom error handling hooks will not catch are the ones which the error boundaries will catch so rendering errors will not be um, caught by the custom error handling hooks as well as the lifecycle method errors because I mean lifecycle method errors are specific to class components but hooks can only be used with functional components all right now in the project let's now see the examples of each of these error handling so um, error boundary and custom error handling hook and how we can use it with the component so first let's see how to use error boundary so this is a react project which i have created for this specific purpose this is the error boundary component and error boundary component can only be a class component because we have to implement the cat derived state from error lifecycle method so whenever there is any error then we just have to set a state property has error and when this will be done then the component will um, re-render based on this state update and we just have to provide or display to the user a fallback ui whenever the um, the get derived states from error is called otherwise we can simply show the error boundary children now the way to use an error boundary if you don't already know is to simply um, use it as a parent component for all the um, childs which are there you can use multiple different kinds of error boundaries to show different kinds of um, fallback uis or you can use centralized state management to configure what kind of fallback ui you want to show for any specific kind of component so this is how an error boundary can be created and used now let's talk about the custom error handling hook so i have created one with the name use error handling and what this hook will do is it will simply create a state variable with the name error and set error and it will return these two um, items as well so inside any component this use error handling hook can be initialized and the component can then use the handle error to uh, 
you know handle any error by providing it as an argument to this function and inside the handle error function you have to set the error as well because this error state variable can be used in the component to listen to its changes in the side effect hooks and then you can do other stuff as well like logging the error to any external third party service and now let me show you the component code how this hook can be used so you will just have to import it and then initialize it it will return the error state variable and the handle error function now if in the catch block there is any error then you can simply call handle error and in the rendering phase of this function if there is any error then we can simply return a fallback ui something like this with a message but if there is no error then we can simply return our um, components jsx html now as i have already told you the asynchronous errors will not be relevant to the error boundary so for async functions errors we have to absolutely use some custom logic and the beauty of this error handling hook is that it is a reusable piece of code so multiple components can be composed by using this error handling hook and listening to the changes in the error state variable if it is initialized or if its value is not undefined then we just have to fall back to a message for the user or you know display the entire component but gracefully fall back to some default values it depends on your exact requirements how you want to handle the errors if you want to fall back or if you want to gracefully handle it so to wrap up effective error handling is essential in building resilient react applications error boundaries protect against rendering errors while custom hooks gives us the flexibility to manage errors in asynchronous code and event handlers and that was all this video has to offer thank you for joining me in this deep dive into react's error handling if you found this tutorial helpful then please consider subscribing to stay updated with more content like this your support means a lot this is nitej signing off keep coding and i will see you in the next one